Coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. Because I was once on the streets and we didn't have Dory's house back then, so I don't want to see a bunch of uh, kids sit, sleeping on the street. And as Southwest GS continues to try and seek funding of $350,000 a year for its operating expenses, a rally was recently held in front of Dory's house, where several youth shared their own personal stories of being homeless. The Swift Current Arts community is remembering a shining star. Well-known author and philanthropist Anthea Loren passed away on March 24th following a brief illness. According to SGI, numerous tickets are still being issued each month to motorists failing to buckle up, despite the fact that seat belts save lives. Thanks for joining us here today. The doors to Dory's house in Swift Current remain closed, and at the heart of the issue is funding. The opening of a youth emergency shelter in southwest Saskatchewan was a long-time dream for many in Swift Current and the surrounding area. This dream became a reality in July of 2016, with the sod turned at this location on the corner of Herbert Street in Swift Current. A community-driven project, which was constructed through cash and donations of labor and supplies from businesses across the region. And after opening its doors to youth in January of 2017, it booked over 600 bed stays of both male and female youth seeking shelter. However, despite ongoing applications for operational funding, Dory's house was forced to close its doors by late fall. That upset me. I, I want to, I'm the one responsible for bringing this community together. I'm the one responsible for building this home. I have to answer to all the contractors and all the people that help, stood behind me to do this home. And I just, I, I just think it's un, unacceptable that, uh, that the government can't work with us and that we can't open these doors right now. A situation which the province says it's aware of and has reviewed the case on numerous occasions. However, there will be no money allotted in the 2018 budget. Well, what we looked at, Carol, was the overall needs for the area in Swift Current and the surrounding area to try to assess, you know, was there a change in what we had there uh, a couple of years ago? Is there any more coverage that we needed in the area for any youth? Uh, I know there's a couple of operations. There's Fresh Start, uh, as well as uh, the centre that's a, a drop-in uh, place uh, for youth in the evenings. And uh, we also did an overall scan just to make sure if there was anything that we were missing there when Dory's house kind of popped up on the radar. And uh, we haven't seen much change in the Swift Current area as far as need for um, that type of shelter. So at this time, we're just going to maintain exactly what we have. An overall assessment which Tom Westbury disagrees with, especially when it comes to female youth seeking shelter. Right now, the Dory's house was the only place for a young female. Uh, there's nothing out there right now for, for youth uh, as an emergency shelter for, for female. So we pride on that, that this is a co-ed place, and, and uh, that's another reason why we do need two employees here too, right? Um, because it is male and female youth that, will, that can stay in. And like I said before, half our residents, when we did do our eight and a half month pilot, were female residents? Well, I would say that we do have coverage. Uh, again, uh, it might not be locally for, for young women, but we do have other options. If, some, if somebody is in a, a specific crisis and uh, a young woman that is in, in need of our facilities, we would look at what is the closest proximity to uh, be able to house them on a temporary basis and then look at uh, uh, more long-term. Uh, if there's no place in Swift Current, then we would look at other options, uh, either in Moose Jaw or, and again, only on a temporary basis to be able to make sure that that individual is, is safe. And as Southwest GS continues to try and seek funding of $350,000 a year for its operating expenses, a rally was recently held in front of Dory's house, where several youth shared their own personal stories of being homeless and the importance of a shelter in Swift Current. Because I was once on the streets and we didn't have Dory's house back then, so I don't want to see a bunch of uh, kids sit, sleeping on the streets. And right now we don't have any homes for female teens. Dory's house gave me a place to stay when there was nowhere else to go, but then it closed. When Dory's house was forced to close its doors, I was back on the streets, and now it was winter time. For the next few nights, I slept inside Tim Hortons until I was arrested for breaching curfew. 
We have come together as a community. Now it's time for the government to come to together with us and get this place up and running. I doubt they want to see their kids homeless. It's time to do what is right and make our voices heard. Dory's House is the only co-ed youth shelter in southwest Saskatchewan. Anthea Loren was well known throughout the arts community. And in this feature, we remember Anthea and her impact on the community. The Swift Current Arts community is remembering a shining star. Well-known author and philanthropist Anthea Loren passed away on March 24th following a brief illness. Anthea brought a smile to everyone's face she met with her kind personality and her genuine love of nature and the arts. As an active member of the community, she was involved in numerous groups, including the Swift Current Oratorial Choir, Prairie Quills Writers Guild, and the Friends of the Walkway. A lasting legacy which can be enjoyed for years to come through her three published books, with proceeds going to various charities, and the Memorial Rose Garden, which she lovingly tended to at Kiwanis Park. In 2016, she was recognized for her volunteer efforts with the Saskatchewan Volunteer Medal, an accomplishment which she was humbled by. And I was very surprised and, and gratified, but I, as I said to you before, it's not a one individual kind of thing that I have been doing. I've had help from the community, family, and everybody around. Otherwise, none of these things would have got off the ground. Also that year, Anthea published her third and final book, Recollections and Reflections, a publication which was close to her heart. Now reached the age of what I call my autumn age, not quite winter, I hope, and I decided to, I wanted to leave some memories for my family. Mm -hmm. So I made a collection of some poetry, not all of it, that I've written, and some paintings and photographs of my ch uh, children, grandchildren, and some great-grandchildren, and decided that, that that's, that's what I wanted to leave for them before I could do it no longer, and you never know when that will be. And now with her passing, many friends and colleagues are reflecting on Anthea Loren's impact on the community. I particularly ad admired Anthea for how committed she was to community. Uh, but but in a kind of a special way, it was all about uh, making kind of improving quality of life for individuals. Uh, I mean, she was able to do that uh, through her art and her writing, but in her volunteer work for you know healthcare and and folks with uh, different challenges, uh, it was uh, particularly uh, outstanding uh, how much energy and sympathy and kind of love that she had for these people and and uh, you know it's a just constant caregiving kind of a approach to the way that, that she lived. Anthea, when I think of Anthea Loren, I think of someone who is genuinely kind. When she walked into a room, you could feel her presence. Everyone highly respected her and loved her dearly. On May 12th will be our third walk. It's called the Mother Earth Run Walk, where we donate partial proceeds to Southwest Homes. And Thea, she's been in our event ever since um, the first one in 2016. This year we're honoring Anthea and um, in loving memory and we're dedicating this year's Mother Earth Run Walk to, to Anthea. One of our last meetings she had or was the leader of in February and we had just changed our meetings over to be more kind of lessons and writing exercises. So hers was poetry and I wrote my poem in memory of her actually and had taken it over to her when I found out that she was not well. So it is titled Anthea My Friend. Anthea so sublime she loved to talk about pantomimes, nursing tales, World War II, and many other memories too. She was a puppeteer, volunteer, a soul that's kind and sincere. Her life was full of graces. She loved traveling to different places. People she held dear to her heart, inspired and encouraged through her art, always thinking of another, 
must be the experience of a mother. In her garden, spiders weave round. With her humor, she turns a frown. She ushers in cheer to whatever atmosphere. So smile and let Anthea know she is dear. A memorial is planned in honor of Anthea Loran on May 19th at Christ the Redeemer Church Roman Catholic Parish in Swift Currents. Seatbelts save lives, yet every month across the province, hundreds of tickets are issued for failing to do so. We have more in this report. Well, what's the first thing you do when you get in your vehicle? The answer should be, put on your seatbelt. According to SGI, numerous tickets are still being issued each month to motorists failing to buckle up, despite the fact that seatbelts save lives. We know that, you know, coming to a sudden stop at, you know, even 50 kilometers per hour uh, turns a 70 kilogram person into the equivalent of a 1400 kilogram projectile. It's not something you can brace yourself with and uh, it certainly increases your chance of being uh, uh, injured or killed. Um, we know most people do buckle up uh, and they wear their seat belts every time they get in the, in the vehicle and the few people that don't are far more likely to die in a, in a car crash. 25% uh, of vehicle occupants killed in collisions in Saskatchewan in 2016 were either not buckled up or improperly restrained. And you as a driver are reminded that you're responsible for everyone's safety in the vehicle along with the fine that goes with not wearing a seatbelt. Drivers are legally responsible for ensuring that they are uh, buckled up, but also for any passengers under the age of 16 are either wearing their seatbelts or in the appropriate uh, child restraint, whether that's a car seat or a booster seat. And for each passenger who isn't, uh, it will cost the driver uh, an additional $175 fine and three points on the safe driver recognition scale. Of course, unbelted passengers 16 years of age or over are responsible for their own fines. During the latest traffic blitz in the province, Police across Saskatchewan issued 400 tickets for lack of seatbelt use or improper use of seatbelts by passengers. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at southwesttvnews.com. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.